Welcome back, guys, to the Spurgeon Piper. This is Wilson with you. We finally have back Mr. Alan Harrison uh, to have a, a great discussion this evening. So, uh, Alan, thank you so much, brother, for hopping back on. Wilson, it is my pleasure, sir. I am delighted to have the chance to sit and talk pipes. And I don't know when people will watch this video, but as of right now, we're two days away from Christmas, and I have my lovely boswell christmas pipe i'm going to fire up here in just a there minute. you go in it in it i have some uh frog morton cellar that was gifted Ooh. to me earlier this year all right and man so, it, excellent but choice. yeah it, it, this this is going to be a, this is going to be a good talk i've been looking forward to it i see you have a pipe sir what do yes. you have and what do you have in and so i have uh my my Sav savinelli uh prince here and I have Stonehenge Flake, you know, just one of my, my go-tos, uh, never yes. disappoints. Um, so that's what I have this evening. If I can find my lighter, there we are. Now, Alan, before we get started, there, there are going to be some folks maybe who, who haven't seen our former video or maybe they haven't seen any of your videos. Can you just give a kind of a brief introduction of who you are? Okay, well, uh, I own the old Carolina Pike Cottage. We started it on August 1st of this year, 2021. And um, we have been very shocked at the success that we've had. We started a YouTube channel uh, simply titled Old Carolina Pike Cottage, if you want to check that out. And that's also the website, oldcarolinapikecottage.com. And uh, I, I'll get into some more about why we started this, I'm sure, in just a few minutes. But I also teach history. I'm a professor of history. and It kind of goes hand in hand, history and yeah. pipe smoking. The, the academic world and pipe tobacco, uh, are, they're good companions. Indeed. <laughs> you know, on, on that real quick, have, have you met many other professors who smoke a pipe? No, most, uh, there's this general disdain towards tobacco yeah, um, yeah. In, in the popular culture on the whole now. Yeah, right. And that, that has stemmed to the academic world. I'm sure it's not the same with everybody, but no, most of the people I've known who smoke pipes are not in the academic world, for better or worse. I'm going to light this sure. thing up right quick. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, that, that makes sense. When I, when I think of the yesteryears, I suppose. I, I do think of professors and pipe smoking. I think most still do. And we kind of got into that in our last video. But uh, it does seem with the trend against, you know, the anti tobacco industry. Uh, and and I, you know, there's, there's some good reasons, I suppose, especially with cigarettes usage, uh, that that occurred. Um, it has flowed into pipe smoking. And I, I don't think it's seen as kindly uh, as, it, as it used to be. But maybe that'll change. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it is, especially among college students, which is interesting. Mm. Uh, I know many college age students who are pipe smokers. Yeah, interesting. And I don't know what the uh, influence may be there, but um, it, it, there are many people who buy from us, for instance, who are in their 20s and in their 30s. Uh, I'm probably closer to the age of most of our customers at Pipe Cottage yep. than, than, than what I sometimes realize. Sure. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, and that's that's an interesting trend to see. Um, I, I believe John David Cole from Country Squires mentioned that that more and more of their customers are being, or in that younger generation gap, which is which is comforting to see, I suppose, because in a way you kind of want to see that to see the uh, the the hobby continue uh, with the next generation. So, yeah, well, it's it's a part of an interesting and more refined way of living. I am convinced mm. of that. Because people in their 20s now have more products and, in many cases, more spending money available to them than somebody right. in my parents' or even grandparents' generation. Um, so I think a lot of people are turning to uh, pipe smoking if they want to use tobacco at all, if they're right. in their 20s or their 30s. Actually, I have several people who reach out to me who are in their 50s and 60s and who uh, they'll send me a message and say, well, I, I tried pipe smoking when I was 25 years old. I haven't tried it since. What do you recommend? How can, how can you help me out? So that's another intriguing dynamic mm. there. People who are uh, much older uh, in the autumn of life, even in many cases, uh, trying to get into pipe smoking. Yeah, certainly. Well, let's, let's get 
onto the the main subject we have in hand. So, boy, 2020 year was a, I think maybe for most was kind of a challenging year. Uh, it brought its 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 certain issues, but especially for you you guys, you know, you did start the uh, Old Carolina Pipe Cottage, uh, and a lot of folks, you know, as this is hobby has gained momentum over the years. Uh, I think that is one avenue where we're still in the, uh, and I say we, those who enjoy consume uh, pipes and, and pipe tobacco, uh, we we aren't as uh, as sure of how all that operates, or we don't see that part of it. You know, we we gotten to know and and watch interviews, things like that, of pipe artists, and which is great. And then we see v- videos of and uh, interviews with those who are in more of the uh, who are more tobacconists as far as actually blending uh, tobaccos and all that. But one, one avenue I haven't seen really uh, anyone dig into is those who own, whether, whether we're talking massive or more massive, you know, smoking pipes, you know, the law DC enterprise, or we're talking, uh, you know, smaller tobacco stores. And that's what I wanted to get into is your operation, how you guys began. And so, to start off, why did you guys decide to get going on a pipe store or tobacco store? Well, the, let me see how I can start this answer. Um, my wife was immensely encouraging. She came up with the idea. I did not. Oh. She came up with the idea of me starting a pipe and pipe tobacco business. Um, I, I enjoy some parts of the academic world, but most of it I do not. Mm. If we were living in uh, 1890 or even 1950 or 60, I would probably be more comfortable uh, teaching history and doing nothing else. But uh, there are several reasons why that in recent years has become uh, it, it, it dissatisfying, not in a bad way, but it did not produce a sense of accomplishment. Sure. a sense of achievement. Now, there wasn't anything that I, I, I felt like I needed to uh, continue to achieve. And that, that may sound arrogant, but there needs to be a sense of, of, of pressing on to a new goal with work that a man does. Yeah. And so I, I had uh, started smoking a pipe over 10 years ago. I left it recent years. I returned to it after my wife and I were married. And um, she encouraged me to consider the idea of starting a business where we sell pipes and pipe tobacco. So I toured around with the idea for several months, and I did a whole lot of research on what's already out there. I researched several businesses, large and small, and I found that the style that I was looking for was not to be found. Um, There there are many, many types of pipe smokers who, uh, they, they, um, lean towards one retailer or another for various reasons. But I was not finding that one particular place that filled all the needs I was looking for, that had um, a sense of the philosophy behind pipe smoking, also offered products that, were, that they used uh, on a regular basis that they could um, uh, support, the owner of the store could support. Now, there are several people who do, who do that, um, but I'm not here to make a full-time career out of it necessarily. I have a career. I don't do this because we need money. I do this because it's fun, because Mm -hmm. I wanted to contribute to the pipe smoking community in a different way other than simply buying products and using them and watching other people's content, buying from somebody else's store. I wanted to offer something that had our own particular uh, brand and it had uh, a different feeling a different atmosphere and environment that, that can welcome in people who may be interested in the type of environment that we offer. I'm very interested in the thought process that goes behind pipe smoking and the tradition that accompanies. And so I, on purpose, uh, started a YouTube channel that would speak to the philosophy of pipe smoking, not simply the uh, uh, technical issues behind it. There are many people who uh, can offer wonderful uh, content about how to smoke a pipe and that sort of thing, uh, but I have never been interested in that. Mm-hmm. We have people who do that. I wanted sure. to do something that was different. 
and the the pipe cottage online store is simply a means to an end we do not want to stay an online store i frankly would much prefer buying things from a brick and mortar shop i think yes. most people would prefer that if they had brick and mortar shops within right. driving distance uh, but but rather than lamenting the fact that we don't have anything like that around where we are in south carolina uh, and I decided to do something about it. And so the online store is the first step towards the ultimate goal of opening up a brick and mortar that will be able to serve the local community and perhaps serve as a destination point. I've received a lot of encouragement from our YouTube audience and from our customers. And um, people have, have, have messaged me from probably 25 different states around the country telling me that they are going to make a pilgrimage to this store if we can open it up. And it, there's a lot of things that have to happen to go just right to make that work. Uh, but our plan, if everything continues the way it is, is to open that store in the fall of 2022. So that is probably a longer answer to your question, but that you have it. Sir. No, that's good. That's good. And, and I think you're right, despite the, the advances of the economy and, and especially more the the larger conglomerate businesses like Amazon, things like that. I, I don't know if it would be fair, maybe it is to call smoking pipes the Amazon of the tobacco world. Uh, but I would think that's fair enough. Sure. Yeah. And, and, and I don't I don't mean anything necessarily negative about that. I mean they they're 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 providing I mean frankly it because of their services um, it, it has given the hobby mm -hmm more fuel um and maybe it'll be a, a way to say it mm. however uh like just yesterday i was in uh waco texas which is the town largest town near me and went to a uh brick and mortar store there and yeah the experience is just far it makes you more appreciative of of shopping at a brick and mortar being able to not only talk with the individuals there but you get to shop and uh you know handle whether you're buying a pipe which I, I encourage anyone if they can to buy a pipe in person, but that maybe is another conversation. Uh, but, but also I was there to buy tobacco and some, some cigars and the experience is far greater. And, and I think many folks, even if they haven't experienced that just yet, I think many folks would prefer that. So I'm, I'm great to, grateful for to see you guys jump well, on that opportunity. One, there was one man I had in mind when I started this, this online store. Uh, I've mentioned this gentleman in previous videos, I'm sure. I think I may have even mentioned it in the last collaboration you and I did. I don't remember, but there was an Alabama doctor that uh, was so, he was uh, the, the superior gentleman, the superior exemplar of an Alabama gentleman. He was a uh, brain surgeon in Mobile, Alabama, and he retired to um, a, a different county in the state. And, in graduate school when i was going to mississippi state i would i didn't live too far from the community where he lived and i won't go into the story of how i met him but he was probably 70 75 years old at the time and he smoked a pipe after every meal that i had in his house he would smoke it there at this huge dining room table that he had in this humongous log house that he and his wife enjoyed living in and every word of conversation that came out of his mouth was pleasant it was convivial the most friendly christian gentleman that i have ever known he would open his heart out to you but he was never forceful he was he, 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 he was the perfect gentleman he never placed himself where he wasn't welcome and he always welcomed people into his home uh especially younger people because he always enjoyed spending time with younger people and I was in my 20s at the time. And when I started the store, I wanted to create the, the, the type of old fashioned pipe store that he would have experienced and he would have known during his life. Because this is not a man who would have gone to smoking pipes in 1948 to buy uh, a pipe and pipe tobacco. Right, right. And so that's, so what I, I look to historical pipe shops to get an image of what I would like our shop mm. to look like. Mm. And so, that that's kind of what's in the forefront of my mind anything 21st century is not very attractive to me when it comes to 
uh, uh, what I envision for the ultimate brick and mortar store. Certainly. That, that makes sense. That makes sense. And th- though the, the, you used him as your uh, sample uh, of, of target, I, I think uh, the younger generation is starting to appreciate that because we've been, and I say younger generations, I don't know, those, I, I, f- I forget where the millennial generation begins and ends. I think it's like right now, age 38 and 25. I'm, I might be messing that up we've been saturated and we, a lot of us grew up uh, maybe on the, on the later years when we're nearly out of high school, but nonetheless, we grew up with being around technology and the, and the opportunities and advances it has brought and, and comforts and, you know, everything with that. But uh, we, we discussed this last conversation. Uh, We've, we've lost uh, simplicity. And, and so that image you have with the gentleman, we are starting to find a more appreciation and even desire for that as well. So though your target is kind of that era, uh, I think we're desiring that era once again. Well, we sell more Bing's favorites pipes in our store than anything else. Oh, <laughs> Salinelli Bing's favorites. And that's that's the image that people have in their mind when they think of a mid 20th century pipe. A lot of people think of that particular shape and style. Yeah. And that's an example of what you're talking about. Younger people are craving something that's more established and rooted than what we have in modern 21st century culture. Yeah, that's and right. pipe tobacco is a very rooted hobby. It, it's not something that you pick and just throw away in the trash when you're done with it, such as you do with a lot of other w- ways of using tobacco. It, in, uh, it becomes a part of personality. And as I've said before, it, you will become known as the person with the pipe. Mm. Uh, when people think of you, they will think of you in connection with your pipe and, and your pipe lifestyle. Very much so. Yeah. Yeah. I was, um, I was talking about that the interest that people have, particularly now, for, it seems to be mid 20th century ways of, of uh, using tobacco. Yes, um, yes. And that really, in, in some, some people say that now is the, the heyday, the golden age of, of pipe and pipe tobacco use. In many ways, it is. There are more blends available now than they've right. ever had before. We have great quality tobacco leaf, uh, some fantastic blenders. And there are more pipe varieties and styles and manufacturers than there were even probably 20 or 30 years ago. But there's not as many pipe smokers. Mm-hmm. There were far, far more people involved with this um, during my grandfather's generation. And they did not have access to all the varieties of things that we have now. Certainly. But uh, none- nonetheless, it was an instrumental part of everyday living. Uh, I've seen photograph after photograph of people here in the rural South uh, on farms and even in small towns from the 1920s through the 1960s. And a pipe can be found in many of these photographs. And um, it, it's, it's just an amazing thing. If you look at that period from 1920 to 1960, a seismic, a seismic shift is happening in American society. There's a pull away from more agricultural based lifestyles two lifestyles that are more urban, that are more industrialized. Uh, people have careers and professions for the first time in this country on a large scale. Yeah. And um, what that does is it creates a busy lifestyle. You're busy doing this. You, you work in a nine to five job. Uh, you've got many other people in your life that you have to worry about pleasing in order to make a dollar now than what you did years and years ago. And so the atmosphere that people in my grandfather's generation would have would have enjoyed their pipe in is is gone now to enjoy a pipe you can't do it in many public environments anymore you are relegated to your home you're relegated to private establishments and so part of the reason part of the image i have in my mind of the pipe cottage when it becomes a brick and mortar store is this place where people can come and enjoy a pipe together uh, you don't necessarily have to buy anything. You can just come and visit and, and, and fellowship. 
And that's an element of pipe smoking in the pipe smoking community that I have been looking for and I can't find it. I mean, you can watch YouTube videos all day long, but that's still not the same thing. No, it's not. Pipe in person. That's right. So yeah, it's not it's, a replacement. No. They're, they're, so I think there is a return. People are getting tired of the 21st century way of doing business. Uh, there, there's a longing, particularly among younger people, uh, as I've said uh, previously, to return to a more rooted way of doing things. And that includes their business transactions. I have relationships with many of our customers. I have customers who will buy a pipe from me. They'll buy a tin of tobacco. They get it. Uh, it. It goes to their house and they start using it. And they say, this is good. I would like to have something that's similar, but maybe it has a little bit more Latakia maybe it has a more aromatic feel to it and then they'll contact me and I can recommend something different. That type of relationship is already developing in the online atmosphere. It's, it, but, but it's, it's, it's modeled off of the type of relationship that people used to be accustomed to with a brick and mortar store. You go Certainly. to your local, to, your local tobacconist and you say, Hey, this is what I'm looking for. Do you have it? I was at Milan tobacconist in Roanoke, Virginia, this past summer and I enjoyed a pipe at the front of the store. They had a little smoking lounge. I sat in the front of the store and I watched the people come in and out and they, they would talk with the owner there and talk with the tobacconist behind the counter. And they would tell him exactly what they wanted. And he would pull a, a big cookie jar with tobacco in it out off the shelf. And he'd say, hey, this, this might suit you. That, that stuff they blended themselves, maybe just two or three days earlier. And then they have regular customers that walk in. They say, hey, I need another two ounces of this. And let me try two ounces of the other blend I've been eyeing for the past couple of months. That, 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 that uh, chemistry is, is what I want. That, that mm. type of regular relationship with the customer base. Because the customers are not simply customers when you're doing this. I never see it like that. These are people who share an interest in the pipe. And, and I... Some people call that a brotherhood of sorts, and I think that's probably a good term for it. Certainly. But we, we miss so much about pipe smoking when we just do it alone day in and day out. Mm. It was never intended to be something that we always do alone. However, I do right. I do protect my pipe time. If, I, if there are occasions when I simply want to be alone and sit and think or even pray, mm. I have to have that pipe in hand. Same here. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, certainly. Uh, you, you've addressed kind of the, the, the long term goal you guys have in, in opening up the store and, and the intentions, which is, again, it's just so greatly needed. But what have you learned so far? I mean, I know you guys have only been operating since August, but in this time span, what have you learned so far? Is there anything you weren't expecting that that occurred or uh, interests that you weren't expecting or anything like that, that threw you by surprise well the thing that comes immediately to mind is the massive interest in our packages our pipe packages that we put together so far we've only done two of them we 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 put together a beginner pack and a christmas pack and we have sold out of those every time i get the materials in from the distributor i can't keep them in stock I had no idea that that sort of product would have been popular. Um, so I, I, that's probably one of the things that we're going to capitalize on in the coming year. We're going to create a collection of different pipe cottage packages. That if you're interested in this type of tobacco or this family of pipe, maybe look into this package. Or if you're interested in uh, something for a birthday gift, maybe look at this. And we'll continue to offer different styles of beginner packs as well. People have bought a lot of the beginner packs for Christmas time, which, and I know this to be the case. People are buying this to try and get other people in their life into pipe smoke. Yes. It's just yes. a convenient way to get them into it. So that's the first thing that has really took me for, for surprise. I, I wasn't expecting that degree of popularity. Uh, the second thing that, that I wasn't expecting was the loyalty that our current customer customer base has to our little pipe store. <laughs> I've had people tell me repeatedly, 
I'm buying from you. You're my pipe store. You're the guy I'm going to. And that begins a relationship of loyalty. And then in turn, they tell me products that they would like to have that we don't currently carry. And I do everything in my power to make sure I can get it. Yeah. I, I, I was not expecting that kind of customer customer base, that, that degree of loyalty, so to speak. And I can't think of a different word for it. Sure. Uh, this soon, yeah. this soon in, in, in our story. So that's exciting. And, and that's the type of thing that I like to see because we don't need everybody's business. We don't need everybody who smokes a pipe to buy from us. That's right. That's and right. I don't, ex- that- I don't expect that. Indeed. Uh, I, I expect to have, and this is already happening. I expect to attract a certain kind of person that for some reason finds what we're doing to be attractive and they continue to buy from us. But, you know, there are stores I don't buy from because I don't like the way they do business, but there are many other stores that I do buy from because I appreciate the people behind the scenes. I appreciate that the character and the honesty that comes through with certain stores. Um, so yeah, I'm going to shut up and relight this thing right quick. <laughs> That you, you nailed on, nailed something that, that has been in my mind. And when I was preparing to our conversation, I, I thought of your goal. And, and I didn't, I didn't know this because of you telling me, but I assumed it. Your, your goal isn't to, to grow in a business like smoking pipes. And again, not to, not to bash smoking pipes by no means or tobacco pipes.com or uh, some of these other ones that are quite large. Um, the desire to make it, uh, not, you know, not, not simply local. Uh, it's certainly nice to have those abroad because of the online influence, but, uh, there is a need of, uh, of the, the locality that the, you know, the, the approaching the, the realm of influence immediately around you to have a more personal interaction. And so there needs to be someone like an, or there needs to be an old Carolina pot pipe cottage, in Texas. And, and then there needs to be another one and, and you know, spread across the, the, the United States. Uh, yeah. And, and there shouldn't be a, a, an outright competition uh, because that's yeah, just that's like right. there used to be that influence or there used to be that, that, mm. um, that setting at, at one point, you know, earlier in the uh, 20th century and the eight in 19th century. Uh, I hope yeah. we get back to that. Yeah. I, uh, I, I know where our customer base is it is overwhelmingly southern yeah <laughs> most of our customers come from the southern states because i mean i i get people all the time from from northern states who who are buying things from us uh, but sometimes i'll get a, an ugly comment from a person and, and they are not interested so much in uh the, the fact that that, that we are not ashamed of, of our southern culture here and i, I don't hide that in the social media that I present with the pipe cottage. Sure. Um, neither in the same, by the same token, I don't hide the fact that I am a born again Christian, uh, very much, um, interested in the ultimate goal, the long view, hmm. uh, eat, eat questions of eternity. And that's a turn off to some people as well. And that's okay. There are many other people you can buy this stuff. From. That's that's uh, right. <laughs> that's right. And, but, but, you know, I'm not going to, what I like about this, if we're going to call it that, is you don't have to please everybody, first of all. And second of all, you don't have to change who you are in order to become a part of it. Uh, there are people from all walks of life with different worldviews who become a part of the pipe brotherhood. Yes. And it's amazing how well people can get along. And there's probably a lesson in there that we can learn from I think on a so. larger scale. But but it, by the same token, I, I you know it, I'm I'm not going to change who I am to to please people who who may want to buy something from us. That's not the ultimate goal. Right. Uh, the goal, you know, in marketing, I got a I got a degree in marketing years ago before I decided to get into history, and I never thought I would use that degree for anything. But what they taught you in 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 that marketing school is that the customer is always right. Yes, the customer is already always right, but the customer also needs to be respectful of yes. what we are presenting to the community. Right. 
And and so it's it's a mutual relationship there. Buying a pipe from a person is not the same as uh, 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 buying a, a pair of britches from a clothing store. It's not the same as, as going to Lowe's and picking up a drop cord that you need for something. Right. It's a completely different retail experience because the pipe becomes an extremely important part of your identity, your everyday lifestyle, and how you are perceived by other people. And pipe smokers realize this. And that's why it's important for many people, I think, who smoke pipes to have that kind of relationship with their tobacconist. Uh, certainly. And um, so those are just my thoughts on the matter. I mean, I'm rambling a bit, but you asked about the pipe cottage. I'm trying to answer it <laughs> to the best of my ability. No, no that's, that's excellent. And, and I, I don't think anyone would mind the, uh, uh, the, the tangents we take. Uh, yeah. And, you know, speaking of the, there, there are some occasional, uh, unfortunate remarks made on you, you mentioned you've experienced some from, from folks in the, yeah. in the hobby. I, I've experienced them as well, but I have to say overall, I don't think it's coincidence that most of the experiences, even those outside of our worldview or my worldview, uh, has been very fairly pleasant um yeah I, I went to the texas pipe show this year and i was i sat with a group of guys and i know coming from various backgrounds not only outside of texas different uh philosophical or religious views uh different jobs uh they probably would have a different political uh, uh point of view standpoint convictions than i would have yet yeah, with all these different distinctions and, and some were made or put up front, like, hey, we, we, we do have these distinctions. It was pleasant. You know, we, we, mm -hmm. we had a wonderful conversations. And there aren't many, there aren't many uh, sects of, of our society that you can find that with, where you have different demographics coming together with, uh, without having an animosity. And, and that's mm -hmm. one thing I appreciate the, about the pipe. Um, is uh, I, it may sound a little hyperbolic, but I do think it does play a role in that. Uh, may, maybe it's attracting a certain type of personality and that might be part of it. But uh, I think was it CS Lewis has said uh, the pipe gives something for the, I want to butcher it, the wise men to think over and something for the, uh, for the fool to put in his mouth, something along the lines of that. But, but it does come to mind. It does make you think and calm and reflect instead of overreacting and do we not live in a society that overreacts especially with our social media yeah so so yeah. There, there's a beauty in that itself i think that uh, when people think of the pipe one word comes to mind and that's peace yes peace. yeah they're looking for peace yep they don't want to be bothered by all the garbage that's going on around us. They just want to be left alone, enjoy the companionship of friends and acquaintances, and simply enjoy a moment of peace without yeah, the, right. the, the, dis the disruption that comes with living in the 21st century. Um, I know that's the case for me. I mean, when I sit down for a pipe, I don't even want my wife to come tell me what mischief the children have gotten into today. <laughs> let's hold that for just, let's just give me 30, 45 minutes. Mm. Let's sit down, enjoy one another's company. Let's have a pleasant moment. Then we can deal with the children. Yes. Yeah. But that's just, just, just me. I, 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 it's, it's, it's a, it's, it's a time that I protect. I protect it every day. Certainly. Yeah, absolutely. I understand that. Well, Alan, thank you again, brother, for jumping on. I, I've been wanting to, a, after our first conversation, I've been wanting to cover your store and, and the path you guys have been on. Um, not only do I hope you guys are successful, which obviously you guys are, and I don't, I cannot imagine it just becoming more successful unless our lovely government does something ridiculous. But barring anything like that, uh, it it sounds like it's it has a, uh, a you know a very fruitful future ahead of it, and I hope as well that it, it's others copy it. You know because it's uh, getting back to the comment I made earlier. It it's needed not just where you are but where even where I am. Uh, I mentioned I went to a 
a brick and mortar store that was that was a first off it was a cigar store that sold some tobacco so it truly wasn't really a you know pipe store and then secondly they didn't have a place where you can just sit and smoke your pipe or, or cigar unfortunately because of ridiculous city ordinances and so i'm hoping the trend occurs where uh both can be offered um an experience where not only you're purchasing your pipes your tobacco but you also are building relationships you can sit down and enjoy your pipe uh, both are needed and, and i hope it just spreads and uh, even if it doesn't become and this is another thing i was i was actually about to end our, our time together but you mentioned you're not looking to truly transition your 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 income avenues and and have make this a full-time job i mean you you have a farm you're you're yeah. a professor mm -hmm. and i hope those who get into it who are thinking about doing something like you are realize it doesn't have to be your full-time job um yeah. I, I know there's a lot of ad, ad business issues that go into that 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 I, I i would not have even though i owned a farm i, I wouldn't have uh experience in but i i think that's a, a piece of the solution maybe that can be helpful is how can I make this work maybe as like a, a whether you want to call it a part-time or a, a uh, just an, an, an aside or an extra thing that's that you can get going and I mean, give me your thoughts on that because that's that's something I think would be fruitful to hit, hit on okay well I think with anybody you don't need to put all your eggs in one basket right the economy is so the economy lacks structure right now. Um, I, I think that people who were building businesses in the 80s and the 90s, they had it a lot better than what we do now. Uh, yes. The economy was far more stable then. Um, the, the country was, I mean, since 1945, the United States for a long period of time was producing over half of the world's manufactured goods. And so, there was a time in recent history when starting businesses look different than what it does now. Now, I think it is unwise for somebody to put, take all the risk and put all the risk in one business venture. Yes. Um, yes. The, the wealthy, the wealthiest people that I know, they're not many, but I do know some people who are rather well to do and, and they, they do not have one stream of income. They have on average five yeah. to seven streams of income. Right. And that, I mean, I say that the pipe cottage is, is not something that I'm going to rely on for a full time job. It never will be because there are other streams of income. Um, who knows what the government is going to do, as you mentioned? I mean, Congress came close, came very close to passing a bill which would raise the price of pipe tobacco uh, astronomically. I mean, to a point where many people would simply give up the hobby entirely. Right. That almost happened this year, um, but it didn't, thankfully. Yes. It's on the table again. I guarantee you it, it's not going away. Congress will return to this question over and over again. Yep. And if the day comes when pipe tobacco, a person has to spend 50 or $60 for a two ounce tin of pipe tobacco, a lot of people are going to pull out of it. Sure. And so, so I have to have that realization in my mind. And I think it's a good business practice across the board. Yeah. Uh, but again, this is, I didn't start the pipe cottage just because I wanted to start a business. Uh, I started it because I wanted to make uh, some type of worthwhile contribution to the pipe smoking world. Yes. Because I think the pipe, the pipe smoking world on the whole is failing miserably at preserving what's best about the tradition of pipe smoking. It's becoming too commercialized, uh, uh, in my opinion, far yeah. too commercialized. When we're smoking the pipe, we're worried about what the next pipe is going to be that we're going to buy. Mm. Uh, when we're smoking a, a blend of tobacco, we're constantly comparing it to something else that we don't have. <laughs> uh, we're never satisfied with what we currently have. Oh, man. Uh, you, and, you, and, yeah. Yeah, and, but and that's not a bad thing. I mean, I'm I see a pipe that I want. I'm going to do whatever I can to make it come to my house. <laughs> right. uh, 
But the, 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 the sheer simplicity of smoking the pipe and how it should be interwoven into a well-lived life, we have nearly lost that entire dynamic. There are people out there who, who understand what I'm talking about, and I'm sure some would disagree with this opinion entirely. But I think that on the whole, the pipe smoking world is not preserving the best of the pipe smoking tradition. Mm. And I do see it as a tradition, something mm. that is handed down to us, not necessarily from our own grandparents or parents, but handed down to us from accomplished previous generations. Yes. Yep. I, I certainly would agree. Uh, I, and I think that's that exact issue that we're seeing in the pipe world has is seen elsewhere. Um, and, and immediately, I have to say, uh, as someone who's interested in theology and is a pastor, it brought to mind how we see that even in uh, evangelical churches. And that's another topic mm -hmm. for another day. But but yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. And, and uh, hopefully we see a a return to that, um, especially again, like folks like you who are uh, who are starting these ventures, and um, again with without much government intrusion, maybe we will see that blossom. So, again, brother, thank you so much for jumping on. I, I, you mentioned kiddos earlier. It's about time for me to handle my own kiddos. So we'll we'll go yeah. ahead and <laughs> call it uh, call it uh, good this evening, and uh, I'm sure we'll we'll find an opportunity in the in the future jump on and i think we probably have several at least several topics to touch in the future so thanks again for jumping on brother thank you wilson for the time you spent with me this evening i enjoyed it thoroughly absolutely you me both well folks thank you so much uh be sure to check out alan's uh youtube page i want to link it below i'll also link his website so be sure to check out his his store uh it's, it's a great opportunity to support uh, smaller businesses, which we should do, but also one who has a desire to uh, bring back and encourage the tradition that goes along with pipe smoking. So until then, guys, we will talk to you soon.